Hey guys, welcome back to Queen of Quirk. In this video series, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my conversations with six Trinity College Dublin students who are from different countries all around the world about their experiences in applying to Trinity, in their accommodation in Dublin, and about being an international student in Ireland in general. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Jane and I am in the dual BA program between Trinity College Dublin and Columbia University in New York City. I have just spent the last two years at Trinity College Dublin, but I am from Ireland so I am not an international student. So I thought making this video could be helpful to any prospective students out there who are not from Ireland. In this video I'll be talking to six students, three from the United States, two who were living in Europe when they first applied, and one from the UK. So my name is Jackson Littlewood, I'm from Colorado in the US and I'm studying politics, philosophy, economics and sociology at Trinity, but since I'm going into my third year that course is being narrowed down like with subjects, so now I'm just doing uh, politics and economics. I'm Gelsey, I'm from the United States. I obviously go to Trinity and I study English, 20 years old, just doing my best. I lived most of my life in Georgia and now I live in Arizona. I'm Alice, I'm from England and I study English, which is kind of ironic. I have a question about like, why did you leave England to study English? I'm Julia Bohenek, I'm from the United States, I live in Pennsylvania. I'm 20 years old, I'm doing English studies, going into third year. Hi, I'm Gaida, I'm French and Italian, I grew up in Singapore and I study English literature. I'm Maddie, I'm American originally, but my family all lives in Italy and I study mathematics and philosophy. Did you ever experience culture shock or like did you feel did you feel you adapted well? That, I, there wasn't a huge amount of culture shock. I mean, I mean I I kind of knew a decent amount about Ireland. My my godfather is actually from there. I think there are some very important differences, but largely I think it, it's not going to be like oh my god, this is so different like if you move yeah. from the to Ireland, especially Dublin. Sometimes where I had some, I mean, I, I was with some friends and people just started speaking Irish. Like I just met somebody who was in one of those halls where you just speak Irish all the time. Yeah. That was fun. I have to say that like the thing that shocked me when I got to Ireland was just how kind people were. I remember like I was at the supermarket and like they were like, oh, I, I bought like some groceries and they were like, oh, hi, sweetie. Like, are you going to like be baking a cake? Like really, really nice. They made me very comfortable in uh, Dublin kind of created a foundation where I, I felt comfortable to kind of like go out and explore. It's just like the dumbest thing people would say to me is like when I was telling people I was going to Ireland is they'd be like oh oh well that don't be too hard because they speak English. I'm like I guess but that doesn't mean their culture isn't different like it's a different country that has a completely different history. We are quite a globalized country especially in Dublin but you, you know, it's but not as probably Irish. you probably don't even think so. I think so because I watch so much American TV yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like <laughs> classes are going to be fundamentally different there. Mm -hmm. The school is going to be fundamentally different. It's a different culture, you know. Things are going to be slower. Um, Ireland's a lot less consumer uh, based as like America is, and there's something very lovely about it because it has kept uh, like small shops still in business really well. It's a culture shock way more because you kind of have to learn to stop putting everything in like an American-centric worldview. It's going to be a great experience because you're le going to learn a lot about like kind of how to not be Amer in a, the American mindset all the time because it's hard not to be, you know, for a lot of reasons because we're a huge country. But why, why don't you like not talk about Donald Trump every five minutes instead? Hey, learn about uh, Irish elections. I try to learn about them. To be honest, she probably knows more than I do. <laughs> So it was interesting for me especially because obviously I lived the first 11 years of my life in the US so in my family I think there are a lot of American culture values that I still carry with me. I think I come across as very American. I have an American accent still but I, I had also, I went through all of secondary school in Europe and I was very comfortable in a European environment, continental European habits and, and values and so I was really shocked i guess it felt initially to me very american um which i really hadn't expected like it makes a lot of sense but i i think the fact that people are so initially open and friendly and willing to chat and show you around and the fact that i was once again operating in my native language most of the time yeah. it really threw me off guard because so it makes a lot of sense i guess i just because i decided to stay in europe um and in the european union for university i just hadn't seen it coming it was pretty easily adaptable to be honest especially because um i was in halls and then when you're in halls, there are some Irish students and stuff. So half of my roommates um, were Irish. Like I obviously had like things to figure out when I was like adapting. So, you know, I had to figure out like my bank stuff. I had to figure out my phone stuff. I had to do like all that. But I think it was actually not too hard to adapt to. The currency, like exchange. Oh, yeah. I had to kind of just get that into my head of, of like, if I'm paying this much money, it's this much in dollars. I'll also say like, it, you know, yeah. say if somebody's watching this video and 
you're not coming from a Western country. Um, mm. I mean, there would be more culture shock than, than there would be if you're coming from a yeah. Western country, but Irish people are so accepting. And also there's a lot of immig immigrant communities in Dublin. So the chances are you'll probably find somewhere that, you know, has you know, the food from your culture or you can talk to people you know that are from there or something, you'll find your way, you'll, you'll be okay. Please do some research into like the historical relationship between England and Ireland. We don't really get told much. Like you don't want to step on people's toes, like you don't want to say the wrong thing and upset somebody. But at the same time, you need to very much be comfortable with who you are because sometimes people might say something about like your heritage you don't want to let it get to you like you want to like be able to respectfully like tell them like that's not okay and if it continues like you need to like know yourself or you need to feel comfortable like getting in touch with somebody because it can be quite like tough it's not something that should put you off coming it's just something that you need to be aware of and actually i think kind of opening yourself up to the opinions of people from different cultures who have a different perspective on where you might have come from is a really beneficial thing. Being in American Ireland is like a whole thing. It's gone easier, but it was definitely a lot the first few weeks because people are going to ask you about, you know, where you're from and what you're doing there. And they may be judgy, they may not be. You kind of have to get the, with that. But there are definitely students who don't think there should be American students or as many American students or that we don't earn our place. That's a very big sentiment. And I'm like, well, no, <laughs> it's possible for people to work very, very hard and still get into your, like, I don't know. It's like a weird mentality. But that can be hard at first. And this is not, should not deter anyone because, you know, don't let the haters get you down. Every, I think this is my biggest piece of advice for all Americans is stop comparing Ireland to America. It's not going to be America. Like, you're kind of the guest in a new country. You need to be polite. You need to, you know, re and take everything as a new experience. Because if you wanted everything to be like America, Go to school in America. Overall, it was just really interesting um, learning about a new place because Ireland is so small. I feel like there's such a distinct flavor to it. With so few people, they all know each other, but then they also know a lot about the rest of the world. So I, I feel like you definitely weren't cut off from discussing your own past or your own cultural background or history. Trinity is very international and very engaged. Irish people are so open and like, you know, easy to talk to, so. So that was good. Irish people have this uncanny ability to immediately become like soulmates with every Irish person. They, I don't know. It was like this weird thing where it's like literally like like my flatmates who were Irish, they would meet strangers and within the next 10 minutes they were talking about like their past and their thing. I'm like, what is happening here? It's just the Irish way. <laughs> it was even within like two or three months, like I'd be at the stage where like I'd walk through the center of town and like I quite often like bump into somebody that I knew and like going out towards halls because there's so many Trinity people there, like you'll probably bump into someone. And then like going out with someone now who doesn't go to Trinity, like I see his friends in weird places and just, yeah. you know. I really like Irish people. They're very like open, very kind people. But what I was shocked by was just like the lifestyle in itself, especially like the drinking culture, which is something that I think still goes beyond me. I'm not used to like people partying that way and like drinking in that way. So at the beginning, I had to really, really get used to it. It took me a while to kind of like, first of all, like understand it. And then also understand even just like the inner working, like even find people and like do things that like didn't involve like the drinking. So I saw that there was like many, like also like different, like, you know, alternatives and which was great, you know, like just finding even people with whom like, I feel like, the tea culture was amazing. It's amazing. Like, you know, people like have coming over, having tea, you know, just start talking. Also, I love like the pop culture and this, uh, how do we say, people are so like, you know, friendly and very like alive also. I'm not a big partier. I don't go to like clubs all the time or I, I don't drink that much. I mean, I'm kind of pretty moderate, I would say. So I think if you're coming from a culture that like, where, or, or just if your personality is not, you know, a party kind of, Thing, or I guess it can be a bit of intimidating, but just keep in mind that it you can make friends, you know, not doing those things. It's it's not it's not hard. And pints are expensive, like pubs in Ireland, in Dublin, the centre, quite expensive. Oh okay. It's like London prices, maybe slightly more. Like it's what like six quid for a pint. Even the student bar is expensive. Don't clump up with other Americans. Now I have American friends. It's your natural inclination to go to your like, but. Now again, okay, for other countries, I can't tell them what this is, but I think in general, do not like up, like group up with only people from your country. Like you're gonna learn a lot more from, you know, exploring things that are different from what you're used to than you are gonna learn from huddling towards what's familiar to you. Like I, 
I think most American students who are studying like for four years at Trinity are totally fine about, you know, like talking to and making friends with Irish people and stuff, especially after like you know, the first semester. Yeah, I met a lot of people who are just there on semester from the US or Canada. Mostly just make friends with um, Americans or Canadians, like people who are like, you know, at Binary Hub or whatever. Talk to people that y you, you know, you wouldn't expect to talk to, I guess. And then the other thing that was a little culture shock-ish was all of Irish lingo. As long as you figure out what those mean, and you know, you'll probably end up using them. I, I use, you know, crack or whatever, like all the time, you know, so. Just like certain words as well. Like it took me a while to get the hang of like certain Irish slang. And like, I say things now around the house and I forget that my family won't know what I mean. Can you give any impressions or like any examples of words in your best Dublin accent? Cause I know that you pride yourself in your Dublin accent, no? You're not making me do this. <laughs> that's that's actually class. Like Irish people end their sentences with like a lot. Like in America, I think it, it'd be kind of. And I, I don't. They, in most in most English speaking parts of the world, they do this too. They just shove like in the middle of a sentence as a stall yeah. word. Like, Irish people often use it at the end of sentences. So they'll be like, oh, that was grand. Like, did you find any particular services in Trinity very helpful as an international student? IT services. <laughs> was actually very helpful as the first one that came to mind because I would have a lot of trouble like with the Wi-Fi or I just have like issues with like my TCD or something and I'd always go there and then there's always just someone like you you get a number just go in they fix it no questions asked no nothing and it's just easy you know the global room I think are really useful a global room I didn't do too much global room but I really I liked it a lot I did uh, one of the Thanksgivings I went there during the day because they always have like nice events and movie screenings and food and all this cool stuff so it's just kind of a nice place to congregate making good connections with your college tutor brendan he's out there fighting a good fight for me the website isn't the most useful to use but if you, you can figure it out like take like 30 minutes you can find everything watch this video and you're doing that right now i really liked uh like s2s and the like counseling services i didn't really use it myself but i helped like in it and i'm pretty involved in it i just really like it because i feel like it's a really nice like group of people a really nice space and also when i was like actually coming in as first year and stuff i, I liked like you know having the student mentors and just like that's that's how i got really close to aaron because we were in the same group if you come to ireland from the uk you probably won't be expecting the intense differences between the medical systems. Normally, when you go off to uni, like your family GP would just transfer to uni and they'd be able to partial notes over to uni. And, and like when you got to uni, you just register and everything then in terms of the transfer and all your notes going over would kind of happen behind the scenes. Like Irish in the English medical systems, because they're different countries, obviously, are completely <laughs> separate. Yeah. Um, but it's like they don't transfer the notes. I don't know if there's a way to request it. Like I haven't really looked into it, but what I've been doing is just being treated in one country when I'm there and then treated in the other country. If you are coming from the UK and you have a repeat prescription that's done through the NHS, you need to stock up on it before you come because if you want to access free healthcare through the College Health Service, mm -hmm. it can just take you a while to get an appointment and a while to sort out the switch or like having to establish like your new healthcare provider. Um, even if you pay for a GP, like it's still gonna take you a while to just kind of like orient yourself and it's probably not what you're gonna be thinking about when you first come. Like I wouldn't recommend switching to a paid GP because college healthcare, like if you have like a long running condition, like they're gonna take care of you. And if you just need like an emergency appointment, you can go in the morning, you can go in the afternoon. Like it's a bit of a pain to get up in the morning or to like queue through lunch, but like you can get an appointment. So I just wouldn't bother like doing a load of research into finding like a specific doctor, I'd just go to the college health service because they'll take care of you. A few places for students are all all of the burrito places. Everyone seems to love those. So I'm from Colorado and I and we have um, yeah. Sometimes I get those burritos and I'm like, this is this is a little sad, but deep <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of tasty. So I mean if you like that two things then it's it's pretty good. Uh, Mongolian barbecue is really good. Umi falafel is yeah. pretty great. There's several places that are, you know, Pretty affordable. My friend Rushen is from China and he took me into, uh, like, he took me over to Parnell Street where they have a lot of, it's kind of like Dublin's Chinatown ish. It's like a 10 minute walk from Trinity, so depending on how much time you have between classes, there's a lot of pretty good, uh, like, cheap food over there that's honestly, like, it's really awesome and kind of authentic. So, going to like cafes and stuff, I really like coffee. Aaron and I, we'd go to Books Upstairs, which is like right by uh, Trinity. 10 out of 10 recommend. The books are actually downstairs, so they have like a bunch of books and then cafe upstairs. You've been there, right? 
I have been to get books, but I never yeah. went to the cafe. And there were like interesting people always in there. Like there were, I don't know what it was, but I'd, I wouldn't actually like talk to the people, but I just like witness people with interesting lives. And you can just tell, you know? If you're coming to Ireland, okay, and you filed an application with student finance mm -hmm. for a UK university, and you want to swap it, you cannot do it and they get very confused by it. Like I was told for weeks and weeks and weeks that I would be able to access student finance. So I would be able to have my fees covered by a loan and I would be able to have maintenance covered by a loan. Oh. And we were told it would happen. And then two, three weeks into me being in Ireland, I was told I couldn't have it. Oh, okay. So you need to like prepare and you need to be aware that it's very hard to get a good student loan in Ireland that's not going to make you start paying interest straight away. So you do need to be able to fund it. They do do it to Queen's Belfast, but they do not do it to the Republic of Ireland. Final words and advice for international students moving to Ireland and or and or to Trinity. Go for your dreams. Uh, no. <laughs> if you want to like really get comfortable in your environment before everything goes insane, like make sure you come at the start of Freshers' Week. Make sure you like put yourself out there in Freshers' Week as much as you can. Like. I get you might be nervous, but they do put on events to help you meet people like that aren't clubbing things. And like, even if you just have people around for drinks in the evening, or even if you just go out and do like speed friending or walk around like the halls, fresh as fair, yeah. or even just sit on campus for a day. Like I'd recommend like doing something because it just helps you like meet people and just feel more comfortable when you go into your first day of class. Main thing I would say is like, uh, you will be out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, moving to Ireland and Trinity at some point. And I don't think, I think people are afraid of that, but don't be afraid of that. Like, re like you know, kind of ex explore what makes you uncomfortable. Remember that Dublin isn't the only thing in Ireland. And if you get yeah. the chance to really try and get out, like even in the surrounding areas, like go to Hoth, go take a trip. It's expensive, but if you can afford it, it's really worth it. Cause I, yeah. it's easy to forget like, outside of Dublin, there's so much natural beauty. Um, and I really appreciated getting to explore that a little more last year. And I wish I'd done it sooner. I don't know, just go to the library. I really like studying in the library. I think it's a really good way to study. Um, I know some people who do not like doing it, yeah. but I really, I recommend it. And for people who come either like Italy, France, Spain, Germany, I have no idea, maybe, yeah, <laughs> to like really dive into like brunch culture. <laughs> I feel like brunch culture is amazing. I, I had, I have, wasn't familiar with brunch culture before, and I now I just can't do without it. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever lose your fun, idealistic, kind of romanticized view of it. Like, you get, sometimes in Trinity, you just, like, especially with my, you know, going to my third view, I feel like we're all, sometimes have the ability to lose the magic of being there. I'm like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, like, there's stuff to complain about, but there's stuff to complain about everywhere. Where, oh, but that's a huge thing. There, there's always going to be, like, little small things. Yeah, and really, I think just every yeah. now and then, just remember, because, like, just remember, you know, you made that choice. And again, I've said this to myself, it's the, sometimes I may have had doubts about being there, but it's the choice I made, so I'm going to make the best of it. You know, and at the end of the day, nowhere else I'd rather be, so. Any final words from yourself? Trinity's great. <laughs> I just have so many great friends there and so many great memories. It's such a good experience. Like, it really is. I love our program, too. I love all the people in English. We're all just so cool. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm really, really happy that I went to Ireland. I, feel like a lot, I met a lot of people that, like, I've become, like, really, really good friends with. It really, like, opened my horizons. I love I loved the course in uh, Trinity. I find, like, the course is really, like, in-depth. Uh, it's broad. Our professors are amazing. So, like, I... And I really love, like, even just like the kindness of like Irish culture. So I'm so happy that I made like that decision to hop on that plane. Thanks so much, Jackson. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Yeah, bye. Yeah, me on. It was, it was really fun. Okay, bye, Jen. Thanks so much, Julia. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye, bye. bye Jane. Bye. <laughs> anyway, thanks, girls. See, see you soon. Bye. 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 I'm kidding. We didn't end the call. <laughs> well, losers. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> and that's it for my Trinity International Student Experience series. So that was the last video out of three. If you missed the first two, make sure to check them out. They are on applying to Trinity and accommodation. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content on university life and other little things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!